let's talk about some of the properties of, um, re uh, of metric tensor. Now we do know that uh, metric tensor um, raises or lowers indices, changes contravariant to covariant, and uh, I mean, if you are given contravariant component, it gives returns back uh, covariant component, and if it's you are given covariant component, it can give contravariant uh, back depending you are using G mu nu or G mu nu. As a matter of fact, G mu nu is nothing but G mu nu inverse if you express that in matrix form, so inverse of matrix. It's a tensor, which means it should transform like this. Okay, uh, it transforms like this, um, and um, it's a tensor f uh, because it follows this condition. Moreover, actually, it depends on the geometry of the problem. Uh, it tells about what is the distance between two uh, infinity simple closed points. For example, ds square is g mu nu, dx square uh, dx mu. and dx nu or you can also write ds equals square root of g mu nu dx mu dx nu. So it tells us the small distance and you can actually integrate it over ds to get the complete length s over a certain path. And this also tells that g mu nu should be equal to g, mu, g nu mu. Why? Because you see if this is true this should also be equal to you can always exchange indices and write as so it's the same thing but because the same thing g mu nu should be same as g nu mu. So basically it has 16 components but they should actually reduce to 10 because g is symmetric. Okay. Um, one more thing. Um, when it, I said it raises or lowers indices, that means not only for vectors, but tensors too. For example, let's say T alpha beta G alpha mu will be t beta mu. So from this purely from the component this purely so from this is actually uh, the, the contravariant components of tensor t from there you, using g you actually got the mixed component of the same tensor t. Um, okay uh, one more thing actually it does reduce this to 10 for because of symmetric but you may have physical problems you can further reduce it to a small number. For example gravitational waves which is a little far away in the future but right now I can tell gravitational waves just have two independent if you write the metric for uh, gravitational waves they, the metric actually ends up for gravitational wave ends up for the curvature produced by the gravitational waves ends up having two independent is just some information I gave you it's not really don't have to try to assimilate it so just two independent com um, components I don't know uh, yes okay that's mostly it about the properties of